Portable monitors seem like they're everywhere, but Raspberry Pi friendly ones, way harder to find. And the ones that actually work well, well, even rarer. Today in Mackie Tech, we are taking a look at the Magix all-in-one Raspberry Pi monitor. This is a 10.1 inch IPS display measuring 9.64 by 6.3 inches with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio and it weighs about 2.8 pounds. It supports multi-touch, has dual speakers on the back, an active fan, full-size HDMI, USB Type-C, and a 12-volt barrel jack for power. You also get an adjustable kickstand, standard VESA mounting, and OSD buttons for display settings and volume control. The monitor lists compatibility with Raspberry Pi models 1 through 5, the Pi Zero, and even boards like Orange Pi and the Banana Pi. And the monitor lists for about 107 US dollars on Amazon, and I will be leaving pricing links in the video description. Magix sent me this monitor for review at no charge, but no money has changed hands. They have not seen this video before as uploaded, and as always, everything you will hear will be my honest take. In the box, you get the monitor, a 12-volt power adapter, a USB-A to USB Type-C cable, a USB-C to USB-C cable, a number of adapters for mounting different boards, three plastic bracket pieces, and two USB touch cables. It also includes a very thorough manual with color diagrams for the OSD controls, mounting instructions, and touch setup. And the included manual makes me feel like we're in the 1990s since most vendors these days just throw a QR code at you and call it a day. Mounting my Raspberry Pi 5 into the monitor is pretty straightforward in principle. You attach the included HDMI and USB-C adapters to the Pi, line them up with the pins on the monitor's internal board, connect the fan and USB touch cable, secure the Pi with the included screws, and then attach the plastic bracket and then attach the back of the monitor. But doing things in practice versus doing them in principle are a funny thing. At least in my case, there was a slight hiccup. Once the Pi is secured down, the edges of the board overlap the area where the bracket needs to slide in. So instead of installing the brackets last, as I would have assumed, you actually need to install the bracket first and then mount the Pi. And honestly, lining up the HDMI and USB-C adapters is already a tight fit. With the bracket in place first, you'll need either a lot of patience or have serious surgical precision in order to make it fit cleanly. Something else that I wanted to mention that's related is that once the Raspberry Pi is mounted to the monitor, you can't really access the micro SD card. Uh, that's not the end of the world, but the kit is sort of marketed towards makers and tinkerers. So if you want to swap out the micro SD card, you're going to have to remove the Raspberry Pi again. And the way it's designed, uh, swapping out the micro SD card turns into a whole project in of itself, as I mentioned. So for my first test, I installed Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm, and it booted up just fine, detected the display automatically, and output its native 1920 by 1200 resolution, which is really a good sign. There was also no noticeable lag using a wireless mouse and keyboard, dragging and dropping icons, resizing windows, and typing all felt very responsive. The monitor's active fan can be toggled through the OSD controls, and I would strongly recommend enabling it even at idle. Temperatures climbed above 80 degrees Celsius with no fans enabled and no thermal pads or heat sinks. With the fan enabled, however, the temperatures stayed in the 40 degrees C range at idle and never went above the high 50s, even during my 5-minute suspension stress test. The fan isn't necessarily loud, but it's definitely noticeable in a quiet room. And it's a little disappointing that you can't adjust the fan's speed. It's basically just on or off. I also tested using heat sinks on the Pi with the fan disabled. While playing a YouTube video, temperature stayed in the low to mid 70 degrees Celsius. I also ran the same five minute sysbench test while watching for any throttling. And even though temperatures climbed close to 90 degrees C, I didn't see any CPU throttling. So if the fan noise starts to get a little annoying, using heat sinks is definitely a viable option for normal day to day use, especially for workloads like general desktop work or media consumption. The audio is also controlled through the OSD buttons on the back. 
I thought the dual speakers did a very good job with respect to casual media like YouTube or music, but I'll let you be the judge. Moving on to picture quality, this monitor lets you adjust color temperatures, which is something you usually see on full-size desktop monitors, not portable Pi displays. And adjusting color temperatures can make a real difference for eye strain during long sessions or when you're using it under different lighting conditions. To test brightness, I set the Pi monitor to around 90 to 100% brightness and left my MacBook at full brightness as a reference. I had some natural light coming into my office and I had a light on, and honestly, the Pi screen still looked very good. It's obviously not as bright as the MacBook, but it's plenty bright for normal use. For contrast, I really can't verify the 2000 to one claim, but at default settings, whites look good, uh, while blacks are more of a dark gray than a true black. So you're not gonna be getting super deep contrast, but for a portable Pi display, it looks completely fine. For viewing angles, the monitor looks great straight on, uh, but for some of my tests, once you start looking off to the side, it does lose a little bit of contrast and starts to wash out slightly, but normal day-to-day -day use, it'll be fine. Getting back to the OSD buttons, one thing I didn't like is the power button behavior. The monitor's on and off toggle shuts down the system without a warning prompt. So if you're reaching around the back trying to adjust contrast or volume, it's very easy to accidentally hit the power button, which I did a few times. And to be clear, toggling the power shuts down the Raspberry Pi 2, not just the monitor. Including a simple script to run, allowing users more control over the power button would have been a nice addition. And a lot of Raspberry Pi case vendors offer that kind of quality of life feature. So hopefully that's something that Magix can add down the line. Speaking of power, even though the monitor uses a 12 volt power adapter, it's not feeding 12 volts to the Raspberry Pi. The monitor converts that power internally and supplies the Raspberry Pi 5 through the USB-C adapter, which I measured at around 5.28 volts. Total power draw for the monitor was roughly 10 to 12 watts at idle. As mentioned, the monitor includes two USB touch cables. For most people, you'll just plug the USB touch cable into the Pi like normal, and touch works instantly. But if you're going for a super clean look, like a wall mount, a kiosk style build, or something where you want you know, fewer visible cables, you can always solder the touch connection from the second cable directly to the Pi and route it internally. On the Raspberry Pi OS 12 bookworm, touch inputs work at the basic level, but multi-touch gestures didn't work for me. Things like pinch to zoom and finger scrolling weren't working properly, and scrolling required dragging the scroll bar. Otherwise, you'll just end up highlighting text or pictures. The good news is that when I booted up the Raspberry Pi OS with OS Trixie, which is the successor to Bookworm and the latest OS version, uh, multi-touch works great. I was able to pinch to zoom and scroll normally with one finger and it felt very responsive. You can also use the on-screen keyboard with the touch display, which worked fine and it works in a pinch, but it's not something I'd want to rely on unless I had to. The display also works great as a secondary monitor using the included power adapter, like you see here on my MacBook connected over HDMI. It also works perfectly as a standalone monitor when connected externally to my Raspberry Pi 5. And lastly, you can even use it as a secondary display for a mobile device like my iPhone using the included USB Type-C cable, although I did not test whether or not the functionality worked in that setup. Overall, I really enjoyed using this monitor. It's responsive, the picture quality is strong, and multi-touch is great on the Raspberry Pi OS Trixie, and the included documentation is excellent. Mounting the Pi does take a little bit of practice and a little bit clear documentation surrounding the bracket uh, would have been helpful. The OSD buttons work fine, but I really wish the power toggle would be a little bit more customized and in my opinion, the fan is a bit louder than it needs to be. 
With all that said, this is a great fit if you want a compact all-in-one Raspberry Pi setup that's more for set it and leave it projects. Things like Home Assistant dashboard, wall-mounted status screens, portable Pi workstations, or dedicated control panels where you want a clean setup with minimal cable clutter. It also works great even if you're not using a Pi as a simple kiosk style interface or other always on display where it's probably less ideal is for projects where you're constantly swapping out SD cards or needing access to the Pi's GPIO pins because as we saw once the Pi is mounted it's kind of meant to stay that way. So that is going to wrap up another video, tech fans. If this video helped you in any way, please drop me some feedback and comments or give this video a like. Also make sure you click on that subscribe button if you're a fan of Raspberry Pi projects like this. And if you'd like to support me, uh, please check out my Patreon where I have tons of tutorials and walkthroughs as well as behind the scenes footage. A special thank you to Magix for sending me this monitor for review. I will be leaving purchasing links in the video description. And a heartfelt thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. As well as my YouTube supporters. I really appreciate you watching and we'll be talking to you again very soon.